application of vectors, intersection of lines. You have learned in two dimensions that you can have either lines intersect, and here's a new word, they're concurrent lines, or they're parallel, meaning that they never intersect, or they're exactly the same, meaning that they always intersect. This is what can happen as the three possibilities in two dimensions. In three dimensions, you have all of those. They could be parallel. They could be the same. They could intersect at one point. But you add a new one called skew lines. They're not parallel, but they still don't intersect. That's like this, right? And then we're also going to add in time here. You could have the paths of two planes intersect, and it's OK as long as they intersect at different times. It's just a problem when the two planes intersect at the same time that you have certain issues. And that's where there's people whose job, air traffic controllers, to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if that does happen, that person's in trouble. It's a very stressful job, apparently. All right, so learning our new word, concurrent, we want to find out if they intersect at a point. And if they do, we're going to find their point of intersection. So I'm going to write out the parametric equations here. You could write out the regular equation first if you would like, and then write out the parametric equations. This is in two dimensions. And if we look and equate our x-coordinates and we equate our y-coordinates, we get two equations with two unknowns. In other words, what we're doing here, we're saying, is if there's a point x comma y that's on both of them, then the x is the same on both of them, and the y is the same on both of them. So that allows us to take our two parametric equations and say they have to be equal for the x-coordinate, and they have to be equal for the y-coordinate. If you do that, you still have two variables you don't know. You don't know t. Anybody know what that other variable is called? Lambda. Yes. And you don't know lambda. So now that you've got two equations with two unknowns, you could either set things up with substitution or elimination to solve. In this case, I took my equation number two and I multiplied it by two. I'm going to use elimination. This one wouldn't be hard to use substitution. Can you see in equation two, it would be really easy to get lambda by itself? So you might have chosen substitution. But just to review the elimination method, you take an equation. Your goal is to get one of the variables to have the same coefficient. And I like to make one positive, one negative. So by multiplying equation two by two, I got a two lambda. And my first equation had a negative two lambda. Then when I add those two equations together, my lambdas disappear. And I just get 7t is equal to negative 35. And then t is equal to negative 5. Using that value of t, you can either choose equation 1 or equation 2 and plug in that value of t. Here I chose equation 2. I plugged in negative 5 for t. I solved for lambda, and I got 4. Since we got a value for t and lambda that works, we know that they're concurrent. In two dimensions, this is enough. In three dimensions, you always have to check the one equation you didn't use. Does it make sense that? you would get three equations with two unknowns in three dimensions, because you would equate your z ones as well. 
you'll always be able to solve two of them, but then whatever you get for your t and lambda, you'd have to also plug into that third one to make sure it also works for that one. So if we wanted to find out what are those coordinates and find out that point of intersection, you could plug in here. I'm plugging in the t value into that equation. I could have plugged the lambda value into the other equation. Sometimes you like to plug them both in just to verify that you haven't made a mistake. And we find out that these two lines intersect at 3, 8. So are these ones coincident? Coincident meaning concurrent is when they intersect at one point, coincident when they intersect at all points. In other words, are these two lines the same? There's our line one and our line two. How are we going to tell if they're the same or not? Well, they equal each, do they equal each other? Can you look at them and tell? Well, if you go about looking at your direction vectors, the first thing we notice is that they are going in the same direction. Right? And the negative doesn't matter because it's just saying I'm going in the direction of one, but in another way, but it's still going along the same line. So if we can show that the directions are the same, and then show that they share a common point, then we'll be able to say, yes, they are the same line. So they're parallel because one direction vector is a scalar product or a multiple of the other direction vector. So next we want to check if they have a common point. So we know that 3, 4 is our point on R1. If we can find out that there is some value of t that makes that also on point 2, so I'm plugging in 3, 4 into my other line, and my question is, is there a t value that makes this work? So writing out my parametric equations for both of these and solving for t, I get negative 2 both times. So that means, yes, there is a t value. When t is negative 2, I get the point 3, 4. And that means that 3, 4 is a point on both of our lines. So we can write a final statement saying, since the parallel and they share a common point, they are coincident. They are the same line. And our last example, I'd like you to change 
Is it, did I change it on yours already? Yes? Okay. So we've got three dimensions here. We want to know if they intersect and if so, find the point of intersection. So again, these types of questions aren't hard, but if you forget how to do them, you won't know where to start and there's usually a lot of marks associated with vector equations. So we can write out our parametric equations. If there's a point in common, the x coordinates equal, the y coordinates equal, and the z coordinates equal. If we look at all three of those, none of them are something that's simple. Remember our last question where we could tell right from the z coordinate that s was 2? We could tell that right away. There's no coordinate here that lets us figure out anything easily or quickly. So if I take my x coordinates and my y coordinates, that makes two equations. I'm going to put up over here, there's a third equation that we're not using, which is that t is equal to negative 1 minus s. Because with three coordinates, you could get three equations. Now, to solve that system of equation, if you have two things you don't know, all you need is two equations. So you could choose equation 1 and equation 2, equation 1 and equation 3, or equation 2 and equation 3. It doesn't matter which two equations you choose. In this case, I chose equation 1 and equation 2. Rearranging those equations, putting our like terms together, lining things up, elimination works really well because we already have coefficients that are the same. One is positive, one is negative. So when I add those equations together, I get 5s is equal to 0. So that means s is equal to 0. If I plug that back into either equation 1 or equation 2, right, this is how you solve a system of equations, you're going to get t is equal to 1. Now, it's not enough with three dimensions just to solve for s and to solve for t. You then have to go back and check your third equation to make sure that it works. How do you check that third equation? Either you can plug in s equals 0 and t equals 1, and I've done that here in the green. Okay? And when I do that, what happens to my z coordinate? They do not match. And if they don't match, that's telling us that those lines don't intersect. They're, in fact, skew lines. Or I could plug into equation 3 my values of s and t and find out that they're not equal. So if these points were equal that I've done here in the green, that would have been our point of intersection. But when I plugged it in and it didn't work, I now know that these do not intersect and these lines are skewed. All right. <laughs>